Exclusive, Prince Andrew came out of the bathroom completely naked Female masseuse reveals how Duke of York sparked Buckingham Palace security breach by smuggling her into his bedroom for a nude treatment. Prince Andrew sparked a Buckingham Palace security breach by inviting an unvetted female masseuse to his bedroom for a treatment, then emerged from the bathroom completely naked, Mail Online can reveal. Monique Gian Maloney says she felt uncomfortable when the Duke suddenly appeared in the nude in front of her during the treatment arranged by Jeffrey Epstein's alleged fixer, Gislen Maxwell. Speaking to Mail Online Monique revealed she wasn't searched and didn't sign in when she arrived at the palace and was shown up to Andrew's bedroom by a royal valet. I got to the room and Andrew was stood there in a robe, she said. After saying hello, he disappeared to the bathroom and came back in the nude. I averted my eyes and I was quite embarrassed. I was a professional masseuse, she said. I had boundaries. I felt deeply concerned that the massage was conducted in Andrew's bedroom when there were many rooms available at the palace. I hadn't expected Andrew to take his clothes off and that wasn't discussed. Recalling her visit, Monique said a number of security lapses occurred when she arrived at the palace where she simply had her car number plate taken before being waved inside. It was so easy to get into the palace and it troubled me because I could have been anyone. I didn't know Andrew and never met anyone from the royal household. Nobody knew me. I wasn't spoken to by a royal protection officer or asked any questions at all. Nobody checked my bag when I arrived or when I left. I certainly expected more stringent security checks. At the time of the treatment on June 30, 2000, Monique was a 35-year-old qualified professional practitioner, who counted Ms. Maxwell among her clients. After one appointment, the socialite told her, I am going to introduce you to someone more famous than God. A few weeks later Monique received the phone call from the Duke's then assistant private secretary, Charlotte Manley. She recalled that she was very nervous about the invitation to the palace. Now a 55-year-old married mother of two who runs a restaurant in the south of France, she said, I am from South Africa and to be walking through Buckingham Palace would have been something I could never have imagined in my lifetime. As I went along the hallway it was nothing but splendor. There were beautiful draped curtains and a plush carpet which ran along the middle of the hallway. There were gold-framed paintings of members of the royal family over the centuries and some beautiful vases on tables. It was all very grand and nothing I could ever have dreamed I would see. She got to the bedroom and there was Andrew who smiled politely and shook her hand as he said hello. It was a very intimate room, but very big. I put my massage table out. There was loads of space. The windows looked out onto the front of the palace. I could see the Queen Victoria statue in the palace gates. He said, excuse me and went into the bathroom. He came out and he was naked. He got onto the table. I didn't know where to look. I didn't know him and felt that it was inappropriate for him to take his clothes off so quickly without discussing it. I didn't know him and he didn't know me. But then again maybe that is what he does when he has a massage. I thought he was obviously very comfortable in this situation so I just let it go. Monique said she had been to Ms. Maxwell's Belgravia home on two occasions before the palace visit, and given her a massage upstairs with 67-year-old Epstein present. She said initially she had never heard of her wealthy client, who asked her when they met, Don't you know who I am darling? You should read the tabloids I am a celebrity. Later Monique researched her online and saw her pictured with Andrew at a wedding then realizing she was the daughter of the disgraced media tycoon Robert Maxwell. When she told me about that person more famous than God, I thought she may have meant an actor or something. Never in my wildest dreams did I think it would be royalty. In her interview she also shed new light on the now notorious photo of Andrew with his arm around the waist of his sex accuser Virginia Roberts, taken in M's Maxwell's Belgravia home in 2001. In his car crash BBC Newnight interview he suggested the picture may have been faked, and said he had never been upstairs in M's Maxwell's London home. But Monique insisted it was taken on the upstairs landing and said the room where she massaged M's Maxwell is on the left. She said she first came into contact with Ms. Maxwell when she received a call to her mobile phone from the socialite secretary. 
She said she had been working in London as a massage therapist for four years and worked with a number of celebrity and high net worth clients. She said, out of the blue I got a call from Ghislaine's secretary, I can't remember her name, but she was based in New York. It was at night and she said her boss was coming into London late that evening. She wanted to book a massage at 11 p.m. I said I was sorry as I didn't do massages that late at night. She was quite insistent and said Ms. Maxwell would be very tired. But I gave her an appointment for around 10.30 am the next morning. I went to her house in Belgravia and recall it was in a cobbled street. She was busy talking to someone, her lawyer or accountant, and kept me waiting. She then asked me darling. Can you go and buy me some cigarettes? I was annoyed by her arrogant attitude and felt she was wasting my time. I bought her cigarettes and waited for an hour or so by which time she gave me her checkbook and told me to write up what she owed me. Our next appointment was a few days later. I was shown to a room upstairs and was asked to massage her on the bed, but I insisted on using my own table. It was a small room and very little space around the bed which was quite big. Epstein was present during the massage and there was an animated discussion going on between the two that lasted most of the time. They were talking about purchasing an island. They were mentioning millions of pounds and speaking very pretentiously and I thought, who are these people? It was all rather awkward because Epstein was there. I felt I wasn't giving a good treatment and she wasn't getting much out of it. Epstein was creepy, seedy and very pretentious. I got the impression he and she Slynn were either brother and sister or business partners, never a couple. She told me about a yacht party she was hosting and asked me if I would be prepared to go and give massages. She told me that I would have to keep private what happened on the yacht. I assumed she meant anything goes. I politely declined the invitation because it did not sound like the sort of thing I wanted to be involved with. I thought she was very distasteful and pretentious, the way she spoke. I didn't like her attitude or her at all. I was very shocked when it all came out about Epstein's friendship with Andrew. In my opinion Epstein was not a good choice of friend for Andrew. At the time I had an instinctive feeling of uneasiness about Epstein but I couldn't put my finger on it. Now I look back and am thankful that I was 35 and not some vulnerable teenager who could have been another of Epstein's victims. A Buckingham Palace spokeswoman said, We never comment on matters of security. 